Have you ever come across a knitting term and wondered what on earth it meant? I have and I am here to help you out. Hello beautiful knitter, I'm coming to you here from Denmark with my knitting and as a non-native English speaker I have been confused about knitting terms. I started talking about knitting in English in 2005 and I was so confused by the terms I was reading and hearing Thankfully, a couple of English knitters took me under their wings and explained terms to me. And in case you're wondering what some of these most used terms are, this is the video for you. I have chosen 11 terms that are used a lot when talking about knitting online. And we are going to go through them now. They are not in order of most used to least used, they are simply in alphabetical order. And we are going to start out with blocking. Blocking is when you have finished your object and you wash it and then you lay it flat to dry. And you can use little T-pins and pin it in shape on one of these, for example. This is sort of a foam play board for children. There are ones made for knitters that cost a fortune, but these for children are equally good. You can use your bed, your couch, whatever you don't mind getting a little wet. Blocking is something that will help all your knitwear sort of get into the right shape. It's really important for lace because that's what makes the lace open up and really show the patterning. The second term is finishing. Finishing is everything you do after you cast off your stitches. So once you've bound off your stitches, you need to weave in your ends, you need to do any sort of assembling necessary and the blocking. And those three things are part of the finishing. The third term is an FO. FO stands for finished object and knitters generally discuss if a, an object is finished once you've bound off the stitches or once you've done the finishing, including blocking for some and for others not. It's really a case of debate. Fourth term is frogging, and that is when you have to undo a larger section of your knitting. It has that name because you go like this, ribbit, 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 ribbit. You make the sound of a frog in English, and that's why it's called to frog or frogging. The fifth term is cal, K-A-L, and that is a knit along. A knit along is when knitters decide to join together in knitting either a certain pattern or a sort of category of knitwear or a theme. It can be really narrow and it can be really broad. And sometimes they involve prices, which is really fun. And generally there is a specific time where you have to start and finish your object in. And as you knit, you share your progress with each other and have a bunch of fun. The sixth term is KIP, K-I-P, and that means knitting in public. This is whenever you take your knitting out to work on it in public, be it in transit or at a cafe or in the park or whatever you choose to do. If you are in public, you are kipping, knitting in public but it's also a specific day. The Worldwide Knitting Public Day is the second Saturday of June every year. On this day, there are generally a bunch of get-togethers around the world. Yarn stores have special deals for you and it's a ton of fun. Speaking of yarn stores, the next term is LYS. L-Y-S. This stands for local yarn store. And please do support your local yarn store as much as you can. They really depend on it. And let's be honest, yarn is meant to be petted before you buy. The next term is to tink. And if you're trying to look this up in a dictionary, you might like me to find tinger and tinker to tinger with something means something very different. To tink is literally knit spelled backwards. So when you think you are knitting backwards. So that's not the same as frocking where you would just rip it, rip it, rip it. When you think you knit each stitch 
individually backwards. And often you have to do this when you make a mistake in lays. The next term is one that's one of those funny acronyms knitters seem to be so fond of. It's toad. So I don't actually have a toad, but I have had one in the past. A toad is a trashed object abandoned in disgust. It pretty much doesn't get any worse than that in knitting. A toad is not even worth frocking. This one is probably one you've heard of before. It's a UFO. And UFOs are not those things that are beaming people up in the sky and doing with aliens doing experiments on them. A UFO means an unfinished object. And whereas there's no hope left for the toad, a UFO can still become an FO. But before it becomes an FO, it has to become a final term, which is a whip. A whip is a work in progress. So what I'm knitting on right here, that's my whip. These are the 11 most used terms. I have link down below for a handy dandy printable for you if you would like one. Until next time, keep your hands busy and your hearts quiet. Bye for now.